we are looking at the grade 12 RT paper one from or the practice exam from November 2018 and we are dealing with the object question which is question three so here we have the OOP question, question three, the object-oriented program question. And with the style of these questions, you normally find the first part is us modifying or editing the object class. And then the second part, us using that object in that some sort of program. So it'll probably say so have a similar format. We're dealing with a restaurant that has software for identification codes and staff numbers. So that's what they do. This is going to be the main program, and this is the program that's going to be using our object. Um, so we don't really need to worry so much about this yet. Um, let's start with 3.1. We're going to be dealing with uh, the actual class, the object class. They've made a T restaurant class, and they've made declarations. So they've already done, I think, the three attributes, so the name, the year open. So there the is open in the format, so that's going to be the format of the year open, and that's the name of the restaurant, and then the number of employees at the restaurant. Um, and they've already done a completed two-string method. So although we might not be asked to modify a two-string or to create one, we, there is one that's there, so we must make use of it. I'm sure we're going to be displaying our object in some way. So let's go see what they want us to do. Question 3.1.1. We must write code for a constructor or love asking constructors is first that will receive the name of the restaurant the year the restaurant opened and the number of employees so basically receive values where was it receive values like this for these attributes so we're going to use that as parameters and assign them to these attributes so the constructor will be getting in parameters these values that we will then be putting into our attributes Okay, so let's go to the code. So yeah, I've got the program. Now you'll notice on the side here, you'll see there's the, the class. So we can double click on the class there to, to access it. Um, so as you can see, they've already added the utils. They've declared the, the object. They've given us the three values. You can see it's a string, string integer. It's good to know. And we've already got a public function to string. So we're going to create another public a method called the constructor. Notice it goes blue because it's a pre-designed um, pre word in Delphi. And we are going to go create and we're going to take in the same that or values that can be put into here. So I'm going to call them similar to this but just without the F in front. So we will get a name and we will get a year opened. Um, you don't have to give them the same names, it's just it'll make my life a bit easier. And those are going to be strings. And then I'm going to get uh, num employees. I'll just call it that. I'll type integer. So those are the three parameters that we're getting in. You'll see in the question it says receives the name, the year, and the number of employees. So that's the parameters going in. And then I'm going to press control, shift, and C. And it will jump to the code where I can write. So what the idea is with the constructor is we are taking these values and placing them into here. So we are using this as information, as input, to put into those values. So you must, you are changing your attributes to what the parameters are. So if I write a note here, your attributes will equal to your parameters. So if name will be given whatever value is being sent through as a parameter in S name. And if year opened will be getting its value from year opened and if num employees will be getting its value from whatever the R num imp variable is. Okay. So as you see, it doesn't have to be the same name type, but there we go. So that value is going inside there. Okay, so that is our constructor. Very simple, very easy. They will always ask a constructor. Then write code for a method called get number of employees that will return the number of employees. It's just two marks. It's literally that simple. Get num employees. So at the top again, we come over here. We're going to write, we're going to get. So a method that will return, return meaning function. 
So we're going to say function get num. It's num employees. And it doesn't need any information. It's simply going to return something back. And if you remember, our num employees variable is an integer. So we will send back an integer. It doesn't say that it takes in anything. It just says returns. So there's no parameters. I'm going to press Control, Shift, and C. Get to the code. And my result is going to be the field or the attribute m num employees. Just send it back. Spit it back so they've got access to that particular attribute. Two marks. It's that simple. Then 3.1.3. We need to write a method called increase num employees to receive an integer. So that's going to be the parameter, receives an integer. The number of employees must be increased by the value. Do you notice there's nothing that says anything about returning? So this is a procedure. So a procedure called increase num employees. So we're going to come to our code over here. We're going to go right to the top again. We're going to make a procedure called increase num employees that takes in an integer as a parameter for so we're going to take in an integer i'm going to call it r increase because i'm assuming it's going to be some sort of value that's going to be increased um, and we're going to make it an integer and there's nothing being returned because this is a procedure so that's our name that's our input coming in and we'll control shift c and what do they want me to do? They want the number of employees to be increased by the value coming as a parameter. So we want to change the number of employees. So this field, if num employees, must be whatever the current number of employees is, plus this value that's coming through as an increase. Okay. Are we happy with that? So that's as simple as it is. It's only three marks. Seems like that's all they want. Okay. 3.1.4. Last question, I think, with our OOP, with our object, before we get to the use our object, write a code for a method called compile code that receives the full name of the owner as a parameter. So we get a parameter and compiles and returns a code. Okay, so there we go. It returns a code. So this is a function. Okay, so we're going to make a function called compile code that receives the full name of the owner as a parameter. So go to the top again. We're going to create a function called compile code that takes in the full name, which I'm assuming is going to be a string. And it's going to return an identification code that looks something like that. So that looks like a string. So it's going to return a string. Okay. So there's our function, takes in the full name and returns a string. Control Shift C. So what do they want? So we can send through a code. The percentage sign represents the first letter of the name of the restaurant. Okay, so we must compile this code. So I'm going to say result equals the first letter of the name of the restaurant, which I, there's the name of the restaurant, not the full name of the person, but the name of the restaurant. So we are going to use the F name property of a restaurant and just the first letter. So we can use open bracket or square bracket one. That's going to be the first letter. Okay. Then we're going to add on to that. We're going to add a dollar represents the last two letters of the full name of the owner. Okay, so for example, that's the owner's name. We want the last two letters. So we've got to get the last two letters. So what are we going to be doing? So, okay, this requires some mathematics. Let's get out our, our thinking caps here. So let's take out let's take a shorter surname so let's if we have a name let's say we've got mr long here okay we want to copy the last two characters now we know that the length of mr long is one two three four five six seven so the length of mr long is seven characters and we want to copy we want to copy from our whatever the name is starting at position 
One, two, three, four, five, six. At position six. And we always know that we are copying two characters. So I'm not too worried about the two. But how do we get that six? Knowing that the length is seven. So maybe the starting point will be the length minus one. Do you see how we worked out that mathematically? Let's go test it with the example they gave us. Yeah, we've got Peter Van Beek, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. I think that's 14 characters. Okay, if we go 14 minus 1, we're going to get 13. So it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So we will start at the Y and copy for there. And it seems our mathematics seems to work. So... We're going to say, we're going to copy from the name that we get as a parameter. So S full name. We're going to start at the length of this full name. Minus one. And we're going to copy for two characters. Are you happy with our mathematics? I think we're going to add something more still. What else are we adding? We're going to add... And then we're going to add the year, which is a string. So we can go just add the year opened, which is a string. So we can just add it like that. So that's what we're sending back. We get the first letter of the restaurant name. We copy the last two letters of the person's name that comes as a parameter. And then the year it's opened. Okay, I think that's going to work, hopefully. And um, I think that's all we have to do for that part. So that's 3.1. All done, we've modified our object, it's ready to be used, and in the next video we will now use it in the main program. Hopefully, let's first test to see if it runs, if there are any errors that come here. There we go, always run it to see if there are any errors. So if that compiles, that means all the syntax here is right. If there's logical errors, we'll find out when we go to the next question.